Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For this week's episode I thought that I would do my own interior design masterclass. Now I've been seeing quite a lot lately that there are a few platforms offering these masterclasses and even though they're being led by some very talented people who are experts in their field they can be quite expensive. So I thought that I would do my own masterclass here on YouTube today about interior design to share all the things that I've learned over my 10 year career for free. Because this masterclass is only gonna be about 30 minutes long, I'm obviously not gonna be able to go into the level of detail that you would get if you actually paid for a masterclass, but I think that I can wrap this up really nicely for you and give you some really good tips to really get yourself more versed into interior design and find out more about the kind of style that you want for your homes and how you're gonna live. So whether your style is traditional and classic like mine or more cool and contemporary, this course should hopefully help you to really think about your home, your style and put everything together so that you can live more beautifully. So I'm gonna break this course down into five different segments. The first one is called Finding Your Style. And this is really asking you to think personally about the style that you really love and how that is gonna work for you and your interior. So it's whether it's traditional or uh, more modern, really getting you to explore your own taste, develop that, and find a style that you can live with every single day for many, many years. The second, part of the course is called living with your design and this is really getting you to think about how you live every day and thinking of an interior that will suit your lifestyle for example if you have children you might want to think about something more practical if you're living alone as a bachelor then you might want something completely different so it's really getting you to think about how you live every day and how that can fit into your lifestyle the third part of the course is called working within your budget and it's getting you to set a budget for yourself and then using that budget to think about every area of the design process and what you're going to spend. So are you going to spend more on furniture? Are you going to spend more on fabrics? What are you going to save on and how is this all going to come together to create an interior that is really a dream come true? The fourth segment is called planning a layout and this will really get you to think about the layout that you want in your room, thinking about the sizes of furniture, making sure that everything fits because there can be some nasty surprises. So really getting you to think about that and then bringing it all together to create a beautiful, beautiful room. The fifth and final segment of this course is lighting and I am going to explain what my preferred lighting method is for all homes whether they are new, old, traditional, modern, I think that this type of lighting is the best for every single household and that will change your life. So without further ado, there's a lot to get through, so let's get started. So the first section of this course is finding your style. And I think that this is the most important place to begin because if you don't know what kind of style you like, you can't really go much further. So I think that you need to start developing your eye, developing your taste, finding out what you really like, what resonates with you, and then you can move on to the next areas of your design. But you really need to know what kind of interior you like before you can really plan anything else. Now, as you know, most of the behaviors that we have as adults stem from our childhoods. And I really believe that it's the same with design. I think that our past experiences will shape the kind of style and the kind of taste that we have. It might be that you were very young and visited stately homes or museums and really liked what you saw there. It might be that you had a friend at school who, who had a beautiful house that you'll never forget and that you always really admired. It might be that you had a family member who really influenced you and your taste. But I think that really the taste that we have as adults really does stem from our childhood. So it shouldn't be too hard for you to pinpoint from the beginning what kind of taste you have. So for me personally, I think that I've always liked classic design because I was exposed to stately homes, historical buildings, um, 
museums and so all of those classical things uh, are within me from a young age and have influenced the way that I look at the world and see design. As you start your design journey you may find that you're focusing too heavily on those external factors. For example, if you visited a lot of stately homes or museums which are very rooted in the 18th century, for example, the styles there will be very formal, grand, and so you may begin to develop a taste for that kind of thing. But as the years go on and you start to hone that taste, you may find that it will slightly alter and become something that you're able to live with. And that is exactly what happened to me. So when I first started looking at design, I was really interested in Georgian design, 18th century design, with all of the swags and tails on the curtains, beautiful silk fabrics, huge oil paintings, and that's all that I wanted. But you'll see that maybe it's not accessible to you. And you see that actually you can't live with those things every day unless you own a big house and are a duke and a duchess and you have a house that's open to the public. But for most of us, we have to live in more modest homes. So you, f you might need to find a style that more suits your everyday life. Now I think that reading through books and absorbing yourself in some design books is a really good way to hone and develop your style and taste. Now this book, which is called Georgian Style and Design for Contemporary Living, is by Henrietta Spencer Churchill. She is a very famous interior designer and she grew up at the stately home Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire. So her father was the Duke of Marlborough. So she grew up in very palatial surroundings. So she's very well versed to teach us all about classic design. And really, even though my taste has changed quite a lot from what I first encountered in this book, it is still one that I like to go through again and again, because it's a very good one for the principles of classic design. So even though I might not choose some of the fabrics from this book or the colours of the walls or the objects, I will still be looking at the shape of the furniture, I will still be looking at the layout of the furniture, I will still be looking at the windows, the treatments, all of those things. So it's a very, very good book to begin with. I think that if you want to start with classic design, this is a very good book. To start with. When I first started buying a lot of books on design, I quickly figured out that one of my biggest inspirations was Colfax and Fowler, which is an English interior design firm, very famous for beautiful country house English style. And this particular company really resonated with me and they have a lot of books on interiors. So I really started my interior design rabbit hole there. I bought a lot of the Colfax and Fowler books and they are really, I think, the best for classic interior design and I would also really recommend them. But you need to find out what you like. So get online, go to a library if you're allowed to and really find out the books and style that you really like. Other ways that you can hone your style is by going on Pinterest. There are thousands and millions of images there where you can literally just scroll through for hours make boards, look at all the different elements of interiors that really speak to you and really develop your taste. You can also look through magazines, you know, you might want to, you might find a particular magazine that really speaks to you and shows the design that you like and maybe you might want to subscribe to that. You can also look through videos here on YouTube. There are lots of ways to develop your style but I would say really spend time doing that so that you can really find out what you like you're going to make an investment in yourself because you're going to find a style that you will like for many, many years. There's nothing worse, I think, than having to keep changing your interior every two to three years because you're bored or you don't really like what you have anymore. If you can find something that you really, really love that will last you for many years, I think that is a really, really great thing to do. Now that you've really honed in on what your particular taste is and the kind of style that you want to live with every day, it's time to start thinking about how you actually live. 
And by that I mean, what does your life involve from day to day? How does that affect the way that your interior is going to look and feel? And how, what is really practical for everyday living? We might all want to have panelled silk walls in our home, but if you've got 15 children running around every day, is that very practical? So for this, I really want you to think about all aspects of your daily life and how you actually live, because this will really be important for deciding how you're gonna have your interior style and how it suits your life. Now, one of the most obvious places to start with this is to actually just think about who is living in your house. It might just be you, it might be you and a partner, it could be you and lots of children, it could be you, children and maybe you've got your elderly mother living with you, your father. You have to think about every single person who's living in the house and how that is going to affect the way that they live too. If a family is living in a house all together, you want everybody to be happy, you want a house that is harmonious for you all, that you can all live in and not be scared about ruining the furniture or knocking something over. You want to be able to live happy, harmoniously, but still beautifully. So really thinking about who lives in your home and how that is going to affect all of them is a really good place to begin at the start. The next thing to think about is really looking at your daily schedule and how you live in your homes. Now I know that the way we live recently has changed dramatically. We're all spending a lot more time at home. Maybe you're working from home for the first time. So really analysing how you live every day, not just in the now and present, but maybe in the future, is a really important thing to think about. If you're going to be working from home, for example, you may need to think about how that is going to work with your lifestyle. Finding a place where you can work that is comfortable, private, quiet, but also aesthetically pleasing. There's nothing worse than being home every day, having to work from home and not being in a very good environment. So really thinking about your daily routine, how you live from day to day, is another important step in deciding what kind of interior and what kind of style choices you're going to make. Making a little diary of your daily activity in the house is a really good way to really think about how you live and actually gets you to think about it more than ever before. You'll realise that the way you live is much different to how you actually think you live. It's two different things. For example, you, the first thing in the morning, what do you do when you get up? Do you go and have breakfast? Where do you eat your breakfast? Do you eat it in the kitchen? Do you eat it in the living room on the sofa with the kids while they're watching TV? Do you skip breakfast and start doing cleaning or other chores? This is a perfect example of how we are all different and how what we think we want for our lives doesn't always happen. So just think, taking the time to think about all of these things will help you to see how you really live and what is actually practical for the design that you're looking for. It's important to think about how you use your home too. So are you a person who likes to entertain regularly? Do you like to have parties? Do you like to have drinks? Do you like to have people round? Do you like to have people come for, to stay for the whole weekend? I know that we're living in very strange times where we can't really do these things now, but think about when life gets back to normal and how you actually do live in your home, whether it's just a place for you to enjoy on a daily basis or whether you actually open your home and like to have people here. Those things are very important to deciding what kind of house, what kind of style you're going to live with every single day and how it will work for you. The final thing that I want to talk about in this section is how you actually live rather than how you think you should live and the rooms in your home that actually could probably be more functional and beneficial for you if you just change the purpose a little bit. A really good example of this is the dining room. A lot of people think that you should have a dining room because you need a place to entertain and actually what usually happens for a lot of us is that we only use these rooms very occasionally and then they are shut off and they become sad, lonely rooms that we hardly see except for Christmas and maybe a few other special occasions. So it's really thinking about whether you need to have a room like a dining room every single day or whether it could be used for something else. 
and for me the, the good example of this is this dining table here which is my more formal area where I would have guests to eat but I'm not going to be sitting there every single day eating from the table I've got a small table in the kitchen where I eat most of my meals so how can I use this as a more everyday functional piece and that's what I use it for I use it for books I use it for flowers plants to display ornaments and objects and this means that the table can be more of a decorative piece that will bring more joy and more function to my life so I want you to really think about every room in your house and if it is being used to its maximum potential if you have a big dining room that is hardly ever being seen um, the lights are hardly ever being switched on it's gathering dust and you don't have a place to do your work for example why not turn that room into your office and when you need to dine in there you still can it's a sad fact of life but for most of us we have to have budgets and once you have decided what kind of interior style you like then how you want to live every day the next thing that you unfortunately have to think about is your budget and how you're going to divide that up to create an interior that you really love and that you absolutely can live with every day for me personally my budget has always been quite modest and i quickly figured out how i would be able to use my budget to spend more on the essential things in the home that needed to be comfortable and last a long time and then spending a bit less on other items and spreading the budget around to get the house and the rooms finished in a beautiful way. So thinking about a modest budget in particular, I personally think that the items that you need to spend a little bit more on are things like furniture and upholstery. So sofas, armchairs, footstools, all those kind of things that you're gonna have to sit on every single day that need to be comfortable um, that need to have a lot of that are going to have a lot of wear and tear that you're going to use every single day if you buy something that's not um, very good quality or is a little bit on the cheaper side it's really false economy because you're going to be having to replace it constantly so if you only have a small budget I think the most important place to begin is thinking about your furniture and upholstery get a really good sofa, some really good armchairs that are upholstered very well that will last you a long time. The sofa and armchair set that I have here in my house, I've had them for probably seven years and they're still going pretty strong. And even though on my armchairs, I don't dislike the fabric, but I'm getting a little bit tired of it. I would like to replace it with something else. In terms of the um, the quality of it, it's still there. the 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 cushions can still be fluffed up, and they will they look firm, um, and it's they they're all really really comfortable. So they've lasted a long long time, and I think they will last many more years, which is really great if you're having a small budget. Another thing that I don't think you can really scrimp on are textiles like rugs. Um, and fabrics so I think if you buy a very cheap rug it, it does look quite obvious unless you know you're going to somewhere like Zara and picking something that's um, more uh, contemporary but if you're looking for classic style rugs I think that is something that you need to again place at uh, a more expensive item in your budget now I think for everything else you can really be very economical with your budget and make your finances go a long long way to give yourself a room that is really beautiful and that is what I have had to do in my house. So every piece of wooden furniture in here was very very inexpensive. I picked things up from 30 to 80 pounds on um, internet auction sites and markets and I've just basically repainted them, um, upcycled them and made them look a lot better. So for example this table here was, I think it cost me £30, it was like a red mahogany wood and I basically painted it up and I think it looks like an expensive dining table. Same with these, this, this, this chair, this was uh, a set of four 
I think they cost me five pounds each and they were again a horrible dark wood with a nasty blue fabric and just spending a little bit of time to paint them, reupholster them has given me a set of chairs that are a lot nicer. So with everything else you can really, um, if, you, if you're prepared to take the time and energy to, to make them look a little bit better you can really spread the budget and get something um, that looks really nice. With things like decorative objects, ornaments, um, I think again you can, if you look around and know where to shop, you can get things that are really inexpensive and that will just add a lot of charm to your room. A really good way to make a room on a budget look a little bit more expensive is by using um, designer fabrics and trims. So for example here, this cushion, this is a Chelsea Textiles cushion and these are quite expensive for cushions but they are embroidered by hand but because I've budgeted on the rest of the room it means that you can spend a little bit extra on these things which will really make it look a lot more expensive and actually these were even in the sale so even though they were a little bit more than I would spend usually I still got them for a very good price another good example of that is if you have very plain lampshades you can add designer trims on them to give them a little bit more of an expensive look and that is what I do with all of my lamps so I buy pretty good lampshades, not cheap ones but just to give them that bit of extra edge I buy trims from places like Colfax and Fowler and just add them around the edge with glue and that makes them look a lot more beautiful and a lot more classic. One of the most expensive things to furnish a room can be artwork so you really do have to be quite clever about how you fill up the walls. I think there's nothing worse than empty walls, but you can really find ways to do that. For example, my gallery wall, which is filled with um, a set of about 40 botanical prints, was really, really inexpensive. I just took them from the pages of a book and got um, a framing guy to frame them for me. So I got a, a huge set of pictures that fill the entire wall for a really, really good price. So if you just be a little bit inventive, shop around, look on the internet, find things that um, aren't that expensive, you can really fill up the walls and get some nice pieces of artwork into your home. Finally, to finish off your room, whether you have a large or a small budget, is to use plants, flowers, books, magazines, candles, all these things will really fill up the room and make it a personal story of who you are and that is what makes the most beautiful rooms in my opinion. They really tell the story of the person who lives there, their tastes, their interests and I think they are more valuable than any piece of furniture, any decorative artwork. Those little things, flowers, books, plants, candles really make a room sing. Planning a layout is a really important part of decorating a room. I can't tell you the amount of times that when I first started my decorating journey that I would pick a piece of furniture and just guess that it would absolutely fit and then when it arrived realizing that it absolutely did not fit and there was a big problem. So planning a layout measuring all of your furniture and finding out whether it's going to work in the room is a very very important part of decorating any room. So a good place to start is with the furniture that you have in a room and if you are looking to furnish a room from scratch and you're starting from with a blank canvas you really have to think about the furniture that you're going to get for the room or that you already have and how it will fit in the scheme. You will be surprised how much furniture fills a room very quickly and everything you thought that would fit will not actually do so. So you're going to have to really reconsider everything you've done. If you can make a plan before you actually furnish a room, you're going to save yourself time, money and a lot of headache. So what I like to do if I'm starting with a blank room and I need to f figure out how the furniture is going to fit is I will use things like stickers on the floor, um, pieces of cardboard that are roughly the same size, basically 
anything that can represent the furniture, where it's going to be, how tall it will be, how wide it will be, and then basically walking around all of these pieces, seeing if it is comfortable to walk around, comfortable to live with, and that it will actually work in the room. Thinking about scalar furniture, I would advise to always scale up rather than down. Don't be afraid of big pieces of furniture. Whether you have a small room or a large room, bigger furniture will always look a lot better than small furniture. So for example, if you're considering between a very large side table or a smaller one, I would say go for the larger one. It will always make the room appear larger. It will make it appear more finished and it will just improve the overall look of a room. And that is a trick that you will see from most interior designers. All of the books and all of the videos, podcasts that I've listened to, every single interior designer will tell you to scale up rather than down. That being said, it is also very, very nice to have different sizes of furniture. One of my star heroes, Bunny Mellon, she actually used to have a variation of different seating. So she'd have beautiful French uh, armchairs like this one in a regular size. And then she would have her own carpenters on her estate make little tiny chairs, which were much smaller. And they really made the room look very cute. So what I'm saying is with regular pieces of furniture like side tables, sofas, um, lamp tables, always scale up but also have a mix of furniture so that you don't just have a sea of furniture that is all the same height and really makes the room look blocky. It's important to have a flowing um, landscape so the eye can travel. Now, particularly thinking about the layout of furniture in a living room or a sitting room, what a lot of people tend to do is shove the furniture to up to the walls and I think this is probably a big mistake with decorating and I think it is actually better to put the furniture, if you've got the space, into the middle of the room and group it for conversation. A lot of people focus too much on the TV and how every person can see the TV, but I think that the more appropriate way, the better way and more comfortable way to do it is to think about how you can have conversation. So I have my sofa placed along the room and then either side of it there are two armchairs so that when I have people round everybody can sit in a group and they will all feel part of the conversation. Thinking about the comfort of everybody in the room I always like to make sure that beside every chair or in within arm's reach there is a table to place your drink. There should also be a lamp very close by or some lighting so that everyone can see and if they're for example they may, they might be reading a book in the armchair can do they do they have enough light to read you really have to think about every place in the room and make sure that it is supremely comfortable and that is what makes a very beautiful and happy interior a great tip that i read in a book i can't remember which one was that you should have a little drinks party at home in your living room and when everybody is left, see how the furniture is arranged. And you know, this does happen when you have guests around, you will find that somebody might pull up a chair from the corner, bring it to the fireplace, have a party, see how the furniture is arranged when everybody is left. And that is pretty much how it should be all of the time, because that means this is how people really live. They want to sit together, chat with people in, in little groups, or as a whole group, and that is how your furniture should be arranged. The final thing that I want to talk about in this mini masterclass is lighting. And this is quite a short segment because I believe that there is one form of lighting that out trumps the rest, and it doesn't matter whether you've got a classic house, a contemporary house, whatever house you have, this is the lighting that is the most flattering. It makes the room look beautiful, it casts pools of light around the room, and it is lamplight. And I think this is really, really important. I've seen so many beautiful rooms which have um, the most amazing artworks, exquisite furniture, beautiful rooms, but then they are ruined by overhead lighting 
that is white and just gives the most horrific <laughs> glow in the room and really ruins the ambience and atmosphere. So I would advise that the most beautiful lighting that you can get for your home is lamp light. And what I would say is that if you have lamps dotted around the room, you're gonna cast little pools of beautiful light around the room. And this is how, um, when, you, when you're looking at historical homes, and for example, on films which have historical interiors, they always look so beautiful because they're lit with candlelight. And candlelight is exactly the same as lamplight. It casts little pools of light around the room rather than one beam of light above the head, which is not very natural and makes everybody look at least 10 years older. So yeah, my number one tip is get your lighting very, very nice. Get lots of lamps, put them around the room and they will really, really improve the look and interior of your room. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it useful to give you some tips and tricks about how you can get the best out of your interior, whether you are wanting to redecorate your home or thinking about going into the interior design um, field as a career. I hope you have a really wonderful weekend and a great week ahead and I will see you next Friday. Bye bye.